dear students hope all of you are doing great in this video let us discuss briefly about indicator which is used in tight reasons what are the points going to discuss are number one characteristics of a good indicator then types of indicator so in this video we are including three tight reasons one is acid-based titration, one is redox titration, and one is complexometric titration. And the indicator related to these three titrations are discussed in this video. So first, start with what is indicator and what are the characteristics of good indicator. So indicator means any substance which indicates some, something. In a titration, Indicator undergo some detectable changes in the equivalent point or in the end point and hence it indicates the completion of the titration. How it will show the detectable changes that indicator possesses one color in presence of excess of any substance and it will show another color in presence of excess of another substance. Hence, during a titration reaction, when a titrant is added, when it is exceeding, then the indicator will show different color. Hence, indicator will do the work like that. And what are the characteristics of a good indicator? Number one, that during titration, the color sense must be easily detectable. The indicator must be sensitive. Number two, color sense must be repeat and sharp. The color sense should be sharp. Number three, the indicator molecule must not react with the substance which is going to be titrated. And number four, the pH range over which the color changes takes place must be such as it indicate the completion of the reaction. So the during titration, the when we are going to use an indicator, then the pH range should, should be like that, that it will indicate the completion of the reaction. So let's start with the acid-base titration or neutralization indicator. Since we all know acid react with base to give neutral salt plus water. So the acid based titration is also known as neutralization indicator. In acid based titration, the indicator is generally used is organic substance and they change their color within a certain pH range. When we are considering acid base, then the term pH will come. Hence in low pH, it will be acidic and in high pH, it will be basic. So, accordingly, in different pH range, the indicator will change the color. Now, we have to consider three types of titration. First one is the titration of strong acid and strong base. And in all the acid base reactions are neutralization reaction. When we are considering titration of strong acid and strong base, then any indicator any indicator of PKIN, it is like PKA, PKB, like that. It is the PK of the indicator, which should be between 4 to 10, which is used for the titration of strong acid and strong base. For the titration of weak acid and strong base, here the base is strong, so the, hence the solution will be basic, hence the pH will be at the equivalent point is greater than 7 because greater than 7 is the basic solution and an indicator such as phenolphthalein or thiamyl blue which have pk indicator is greater than 7 should be used similarly for the titration of weak base and strong acid where the solution will be acidic the ph at the equivalent point which is less than 7 which is acidic and an indicator such as methyl red and bromocresol blue. These are examples with P 
PK indicator less than 7 should be used. That means when we are going to titrate with different acid and different base, then the PK indicator should match with the resultant solution. If a strong acid and strong base, then the solution will be means the PK indicator should be 4 to 10 in the range. But when it is weak acid and strong base, then the solution is basic, hence PK indicator should be greater than 7. When the titration is weak base and strong acid, then PK is less than 7 because it is strong acid and the solution is um, acidic. Hence, these are the different types of acid base titrations and different types of indicator will be used. Hence, these are the tables where the indicator and their color and their acidic and basic colors are given where in range pH equal to 4 below pH equal to 4 methyl orange is used which acidic color is red and basic color is yellow when pH is range is 4.5 below 4.5 it is green bromocresol and above 4.8 it is blue bromothymol below 6.9 it is blue yellow and above pH 7.3 it is blue similarly thiamol blue phenolphthalein methyl red alizarin yellow these are the indicators where pH range has different colors normally in acidic methyl orange bromocresols are used and in basic phenolphthalein methyl blue alizarin yellow these are used now two theories are there for the acid base indicator number one is Ostwald theory so according to this theory the color change is due to the ionization of acid base indicator when this indicator is ionized then it has different color and when it is unionized then it is different color so it's ion where H positive is there so it is color a when it's ion is ionized to H plus and ion minus then it is color b so this indicator may be weak acid or it may be weak base and from law of mass order the indicator constant equal to concentration of H plus into ion minus this is uh, right hand side and divided by concentration of H ion left hand side hence pH equal to pK ion plus of log of ion minus by H ion from here we can say that the color of the indicator is determined by the ratio ion by H ion and is governed by pH of the solution. That means the color of the solution will be governed by the ratio of this and this because it has one color, it has one color. Ionized form and unionized form and the ratio of ionized form and unionized form will determine the color and that will be governed by pH of the solution. The indicator is either weak acid or weak base. If the indicator is weak acid, then during acid base titration, due to the common ion H plus in acidic medium, the ionization of the indicator is very slow. When base is added to the acidic solution, then after some time, the all the acids are neutralized by the base. Further addition of base, the solution becomes basic and hence the ionization of the indicator will increase. As a result, the color of the solution will be different from the unionized indicator. For example, if we consider the phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein is colorless in acidic medium and it will be pink in the basic medium. 
In acidic medium, phenolphthalein has common ion H plus and hence the dissociation is slow. When base is added to the acid using phenolphthalein indicator, then the base will be neutralized by acid. After further addition of this uh, base, uh, after neutralization, further addition of the base, the solution become basic and in basic medium, the phenolphthalein will ionize to give this ionized phenolphthalein pH minus, which is pink color. Hence, after the next to neutralization point, the solution become pink because it is ionized. The indicator is ionized. Another theory is that it is quinot theory or resonance theory, which include is acid base the indicator exists in two or more tautomeric form one is benzene form and one is quinoid form one is benzoid form and one is quinoid form one in acidic medium and one is alkaline medium and in benzoid form the indicator has one color and in quinoid form the indicator has different color suppose phenolphthalein in case of phenolphthalein, this is the structure of phenolphthalein. When it is base is added, then it, it will go to the quinoid structure, which color is pink. Further, if acid is added, then it is coming to the benzoid structure, which is colorless. This is the quinoid theory. Similarly, if we see the methyl orange, this is the acidic medium quinoid structure which red and in basic medium it is the benzoid structure which is yellow now there are two examples of mixed indicator and universal indicator in titration of weak acid and weak base the ph range is very narrow it is coming very for a very short time hence Two or more indicators are mixed to get the required pH where the titration is possible. For example, addition of xylene cyanol in methyl orange color changes from green to grey to magenta while passing from alkaline to acidic solution. Similarly, one indicator is there that is universal indicator which in where the indicator is used for the wide range of pH for the titration of uh, acid and base such that it involves a wide range of pH. So what is the composition of mixed indicator? One example, mixer of 0.1 gram phenolphthalein, 0.2 gram methyl red, 0.3 gram methyl yellow, 0.4 gram bromothymol, 0.5 gram thymol blue. These are mixed in 500 ml of absolute alcohol and sufficient sodium hydroxide is added until the color changes to yellow. This is the universal indicator where the pH changes like that. At pH 2, it is red. At pH 4, it is orange. At pH 6, it is yellow. At pH 8, it is green and at pH 10 the indicator shows blue color hence from pH 2 to pH 10 the color change can be observed these are the titration curve this is a summary of titration curve for strong acid strong base weak acid strong base and weak base strong acid these are some examples and these are titration curve for strong acid strong base curve begins at low pH Rapid change in pH near equivalent point 6 to 9 and pH equal to 7 is the equivalent point and curve ends at high pH. Similarly, titration of weak acid and strong base, uh, this is the strong base or so basic solution so equivalent point will come above 7, it is at nearly 9. Similarly, for weak base, strong acid solution will be acid, acid, so equivalent point will come below 7, around 5. Similarly, for titration of um, this weak acid and weak base, we will not get a 
sharp change in pH and difficult to perform the titration using ordinary indicator. Next is redox titration. Redox titration involves both oxidation and reduction reaction and the indicator marked sudden change in oxidation potential near the equivalent point. Two types of redox indicators are used. One is general that varies as a function of uh, potential of the cell and specific that react to its specific chemical species involved in the titration. Now, let us first discuss the general redox indicator which involved both redox, uh, both oxidation and reduction reaction of the indicator. The oxidized form of the indicator has one color and the reduced form of the indicator has different color. Applying Nernst equation that is coming from electrochemistry on redox indicator that E equal to E naught indicator plus 0.0591 by N, N means number of electrons involved log of indicator oxidized divided by indicator reduced to see the color since at least 10 percent conversion of one form to another form should be required hence the ratio of indicator oxidized by indicator reduced should be 1 by 10 so the color change will be seen at e equal to e naught indicator plus minus 0 0.0591 by n. This minus sign is coming from log of 1 by 10. And this e is dependent on the numbers of electrons involved. And this is the principle of general redox indicator. These are written here. Next is specific redox indicator specific redox indicator means uh, one example is stars that stars is react to it i3 minus that is iodine to give a blue complex hence this is a special type of indicator where the iodine is an oxidant and it will reduce to form one complex that have different color and stars is react to hydrogen which will give blue complex and when it is reduced it will give different color so it is a specific redox indicator next is self indicator self indicator means one example is kmno4 kmno4 is uh, a colored solution and with the slight excess of the reagent ion uh, the titration can be easily detected thus the titration of oxalic acid ferrous ammonium sulfate and hydrogen peroxide with potassium permanganate this is a redox reaction where oxidation and reduction both are used where potassium permanganate is the oxidizing agent which acting as a self indicator here and after the completion of the reaction and a drop of KMnA4 is in excess a light pink color is itself developed indicating the completion of the reaction and uh, this is the redox titration curve where uh, the percent titration was plotted against this E cell means this electrode potential of the cell where there is a sharp increase in the equivalent point and it will be like this and there are different types of redox, tit redox titration depending upon the oxidizing agent it may be perm permanganetrometry where titration uses potassium permanganate Dichromatometry, where titration uses potassium dichromate, iodine titration, iodimetry, and iodometry. In iodometry, the titrant uses direct iodine, and in iodometry, the titrant uses sodium sulfate, where iodine is liberated. And serimetry, where titrant uses cerium sulfate. Bromatometry, where titrant uses K potassium bromate, and in iodatometry, where titrant uses iodate. 
Next is complexometric titration or metal indicator. In complexometric titration, the titration involves a complex formation reaction where an anion is transformed into a complex ion and the equivalent point is determined by using metal indicator. So, this ion is coming from ligand and it will react with a metal to form a stable metal complex. And in complexometric titration is performed by the Lewis acid base concept because the ligand is acting as a base because it is capable of donating lone pair and the metal is acting as acid. So it is similar like acid base titration and sometimes the ligand may form a uh, ring complex which is known as kilet and the greater the number of rings are formed more stable is the kilet. Now complexometric titrations are also called kilometric titration, kilometry, kiletrometric titration or edita titration. Why it is edita titration? Because the complex, the ligand normally used for the kilet formation is EDTA. Now, the metal indicator which is used, it, these are dyes which show one color in the presence of metal ion and no color or different color in absence of the metal ion. Now, in absence of the metal ion means the metal will form a complex with the ligand. Now, the PM indicator means the indicator is bonded with the metal and the stability complex, uh, stability constant of that complex, that metal indicator complex is very low compared to the metal ligand complex. So, when a ligand is added, then the metal indicator bond is broken and the ligand will form complex with the metal. Hence, the metal indicator complex has one color when it is bonded with EDTA, it will give um, metal ligand complex and the indicator has different color. This is the reaction. Now, the If we see the reaction, metal plus ligand will give ML according to law of mass action K equal to ML by M into L. Then if we see the concentration of M, then it will be ML divided by K into L. Now if ML is equal to L, if ML is equal to L, since K is constant, that means M is also constant. That means if the metal ligand complex and ligand is equivalent, then the metal should be also constant. And in metal ligand complex, the equilibrium will be affected by the pH. And this as the pM increases until the pH will be reached at 10 then the ligand concentration will be equal to the metal ligand complex concentration hence normally this pm is same as ph in complexometric titration that means the ph is therefore usually chosen for carrying out titration of metal with chelating agent in buffered solution now these are the important properties of metal indicator. What are the properties? That number one, that the dye metal complex must be chemically stable. That means the uh, metal indicator complex must be chemically stable throughout the titration. It should not dissociate otherwise color change is not observed. Number two, dye metal complex that is indicator metal complex should be 1 is to 1 ratio. In 1 is to 1 ratio, and it should be weaker than metal ligand complex because it should 
break the bone should break to form the bone with metal ligand this uh, ligand has the higher affinity should be uh, to the metal next the color contrast should be more between the free indicator and the metal indicator complex so that sufficient uh, color will be detected in titration the indicator must be sensitive to metal ion concentration and number five the color reaction should be specific and selective for metal being titrated and number six the indicator should not compete with the complexing ascent these are the important properties of metal indicator these are some examples with the structure for the metal indicator along with their ph range number one is aerochrome black tea which color since is red to blue at ph range six to seven what are the metals detected calcium magnesium barium marker zinc cadmium manganese lead this is murexide or ammonium purpurate which is color since violet to blue ph range is 12 metals are calcium copper cobalt similarly catechol violet methyl blue thiamol blue alizarin and sodium alizarin sulfate and xylenol orange so these are the different types of metal indicator with different ph strains and along with different types of metal which are detected so this video will give some basic idea about different types of indicators which are used in different titrations that's all for today thank you